back from the local charity shop with some goodies useful for radio. The first item is this magnificent box. Its rounded corners give it a bit of style. Like this, it's good for solid state projects with the circuit boards accessible from the top. Or if building a valve rig, then turn it upside down to make a great chassis. Have a look in your charity shops and see if you can get something similar. Second is this Smithsonian crystal radio kit. This is it, obviously built by someone already and no instructions. Still, it's easy enough to trace the circuit. Underneath couldn't be simpler, just the variable capacitor visible. As for the parts, the coil, the diode, that's a germanium diode, and the tuning capacitor. And of course the obligatory crystal earpiece. Make sure you clear the other person's earwax out first, before you put this one in your ear. That's made a bit easier with these earpieces, because the front earpiece part is actually removable. You can just unscrew it, like so. The results you get depend on the quality of your antenna, how good your earth connection is, and whether there are any strong AM stations in your area. A simple crystal set might be able to pick up signals about 20 or 30 kilometres away, further if it's a powerful station. The station you're hearing now is 1377 3MP. I believe it's a 5 kilowatt station around 20 kilometres from here. I'm not using an earth connection, but if I did, other stations should be audible. The Smithsonian is by no means the worst crystal set I've ever used. Some kits didn't even come with a tuning capacitor, meaning you couldn't even select stations. However, there are still simple improvements that would make performance better, especially if used with a better antenna and earth system. Just going through the circuits, this is the basic circuit used in the Smithsonian kit. It's the simplest, but if you're using a reasonable sized antenna, then stations will appear a jumble if you've got more than one station in the area. Much better and improving selectivity is where you've got both the diode and the antenna tapped down the coil. You use alligator clips so you can vary the tapping point because different stations have different optimum settings. And finally, similar to above but using a primary winding for the antenna. That again offers better selectivity. Those small changes, if applied to this radio, would dramatically improve its performance.